Hello, good evening and welcome to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. My name is Ross Briley and it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, uh, that's for sure. But uh, we're not too bothered about that, are we? What we're bothered about is getting Christmas out of the way and getting stuck into the Boxing Day action. And uh, there'll be plenty of declarations over Christmas dinner. Most of them will probably start family arguments. Uh, but luckily, the most important declarations are through. And we have gone through the Boxing Day cars to get excited uh, about the racing on the 26th. And what a day it is. The uh, uh, loss of the last couple of weekends, of course, with the bad weather and the cold snap, uh, is the gain uh, of the, uh, the 26th. We've got huge fields all over the place. Uh, and we've also got a bit of a... Uh, a Brucey bonus with an extra grade one uh, at Kempton, of course, in the shape of the long walk as well. And, uh, well, I don't know if it was in your uh, your letters to Santa, but uh, we've, uh, we've got that on top, which means we've got five grade ones, four expert minds, over 300 grand, two hours on TV, and hopefully a winning tip from Paul Keeley. Uh, who, of course, is once again in the uh, the studio with me. Uh, Keels, Kempton, King George Day, of course. We've got the uh, the, uh, the Coral Welsh National Course on the 27th. We've got grade ones coming out of our ears. We've got, uh, I mean, we've got each way fields for sort of 60, 70% of the uh, the cards. Yeah, it's are. fantastic. And I wonder how long it took you to come up with all that, then. It took me, oh, I haven't done any, I haven't looked at the races. And looking at, <laughs> looking at your hats, I've decided either I've got a massive head or you've got a massive hat. I feel a bit hard done by. You've got a great one, haven't you? Yeah, it, um, it does look pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I mean, I've also got a massive head as well, so um, I think you ordered the, yeah, you ordered the kids' version. But, yeah. Um, when will Big Ears be arriving? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wrong noddy for uh, for this time of year, Absolutely, mate. Absolutely, yeah. Sorry, but I'm going to keep doing it. I like it. It's right. fine. There you go. <laughs> um, and uh, hopefully it'll be thrown back in celebration with some, uh, uh, some pets. Are you Plenty of strong opinions. Are you going to see any of your family over the next couple of days? Or? Uh, Christmas Day is tomorrow for us because uh, my wife's a nurse. She's working on Christmas Day or Christmas night, as it were. So we're going to have the, the full works tomorrow instead because she's also working on Boxing Day. So, uh, so yeah, we, we start a day early. Yeah, there you go. I'll have a day of complete boredom waiting for Boxing Day to come around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's how you probably do it a day early, isn't it? You've got to, yeah. you've got to stretch it out a bit longer. Uh, so, uh, so Keel's in the uh, the studio, ready to uh, hopefully tip a few winners. Uh, and uh, at home, uh, the uh, the Dower Scott Keith Melrose has joined us. <laughs> uh, absolutely no. No tinsel, no Christmas jumper, no hat, no nothing. Uh, I bet it's, it's just lumps of coal for Christmas, Keith. It's, it's Christmas jumper here. Is oh, that a Christmas jumper? <laughs> it's, a, it's a festive jumper. It's not got Merry Christmas on or everything, but it's, it's got like snowflakes in that. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. What do you want? Well, I, I'm, I don't know. I want you to look as daft as us, quite frankly, mate. But um, <laughs> uh, how? Yeah, what's your? What are your plans before uh, before the big day on Boxing Day? Uh, yeah, it's just a very fairly typical Christmas here. We've got the, I mean, even the younger kid, she's two and a bit now, so she just about gets what's going on. So uh, first year of that, and uh, yeah, so just all waiting for Boxing Day though, and. So get the bets on as early as you can and, and try and enjoy Christmas Day then. It's all about King George and the whole festive period after that. Yeah, it is indeed. Uh, it's uh, not just about Boxing Day, uh, though, of course. Uh, Simon Clare joining us uh, from home has made the effort with a proper Christmas jumper. Uh, and uh, obviously you're looking forward to Boxing Day, Simon, but big day on the 27th at Chepstow. Yeah, two huge days, really. Obviously, Boxing Day uh, at Kempton and obviously all the supporting cards. a huge betting day. And it's great that uh, after the last couple of weekends with the big racing frozen off, we got it all on plus more with the long walk. Um, and then, yeah, Tuesday, Coral Welsh Grand National. That's the 50th year that Coral has sponsored the Welsh Grand National, which in any sport is pretty extraordinary to have a sponsorship that's lasted that long and still going. So uh, we're celebrating the 50th year, 50th year of the Coral Welsh Grand National. And um, it looks like being a corker. Yeah, it does indeed. And um, should we? I think we should probably start start with that. Maybe uh, have a quick look at uh, at uh, Chepstow's uh, Welsh National, of course. Um, do get your like, and this is live and interactive. So if you haven't already, do uh, like that stream on YouTube and get involved in the chat. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone who already has. Uh, Tom Leach, Brad Furness, Brian Galt, uh, Racing Demon, Tim Conley, Jim Stanton, Hugh Masson, Tim Conley, Bubba, uh, Mark Winstone, uh, and uh, plenty of others uh, as well. So get involved in that chat. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, currently, the Coral Welsh Grand National uh, quick wave is nine to two favourite, Ask Me Early, 7-1, The Big Dog, 7-1, The Galloping Bear, 7, uh, Pat's Fancy, 10s, The Big Breakaway, 10s, Punitive, 12s, uh, and 14s, Bar. Of course, uh, we don't necessarily know who's definitely lining up yet, uh, Simon, but uh, just talk us through a bit of the uh, uh, the moves or the makeup of this race. Of course, um, uh, Venetia uh, Williams uh, looking, well, like she could have a, a very progressive staying chaser and not the first or 
tenth or twentieth time I've said that about the yard in the shape of Quick Wave. Yeah, I mean, I think at first I'd just like to set the race up, um, just in terms of it being run in memory of Kim Gingell, who uh, was Joe Tizard's uh, sister, Colin and Pauline Tillard's daughter, who died uh, very suddenly, actually, of cancer, very sort of aggressive cancer back in the pandemic in um, 2020, May 2020. And um, we actually ran the race in her memory uh, in 2020 and 21, but both times, actually, well, uh, Chepstow was still in lockdown, so there were no crowds present. So. Um, we've decided to run it again in her memory with the full Welsh crowd. And the significance of this is really that this race uh, was won by Native River and Elegant Escape for the Tizard clan. And Kim, for those who know her, was a very, you know, uh, organised, meticulous operator in the Tizard team. But she used to let her hair down when, when they celebrated big successes. And probably one of the great successes was that when Elegant Escape ran, won. Uh, and there's a huge party in the Coral Suite. We obviously sponsor the Tizard team. So it's a nice... A touch. Um, we're going to run it in the memory of Kim Gingell and actually Freddie, her her son and uh, Joe and Collins, uh, well Joe's nephew, uh, uh, is, uh, is 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 actually riding the race for Truckers Tavern for Paul Nichols. So even better that we're going to have Freddie riding in the race run in memory of his mother who died very early. So that's just a, a, a sort of bit of a context for for the significance of this race as well as it being our 50th running of the race. But in terms of the race itself. Um, it's, it's great to have a, a couple of Irish runners in the Big Dog and Ascaria 10. I think they're both going to run. Um, Quick Wave is the favourite. I'm not sure how strong that London National was that he won for Venetia Williams. It was a day when she was she really suddenly hit form. Um, so I think she, you know, Quick Wave is a horse to take on. There's a few in there I like. The big breakaway for the Tizard team obviously be hugely poignant if it could win. Uh, and this is a horse who's yet to really live up to the huge price tag and the huge potential. But I think he's a staying chase. He'll be really suited to Chepstow. He's very, very well at home. I think the Tizard team are pretty confident of a big run. So I like him a lot. Uh, I also think three under through five is the sort of horse who's made for, for Chepstow and, a st and, and this sort of test. You know, he was a very good novice chaser, was six to long press at Cheltenham last year and was un unseated, I think, at the first in the uh, in the Coral Gold Cup at Newbury. Um, but again, he's a horse who sort, sort of sits, fits the profile. But it looks like being a really strong field. Really delighted. If we can get a full field, even better. The decks come through on Boxing Day morning. Um, but in every way, every shape, the form, it looks like being a, a vintage Coral Welsh Grand National. It is indeed. Uh, quick, um, uh, any angles of sore keels on the Welsh National? Yeah, well, first angle is the ground, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's unusual, isn't it? I mean, t this morning before they had the rain, it was good. Yeah. I mean, it's just unheard of for Chepstow to have good ground in the winter, isn't it? Like, you know, you know, virtually every run is, is run on soft or heavy ground. And here we've got, it's now good to soft good in places. There isn't much rain forecast for Chepstow. There's loads for Kempton forecast on Christmas Day, but not for Chepstow. So, you know, it isn't going to be the normal slog. Um, uh, and there were some, you know, there probably some slow old boats that you probably think will probably <laughs> need it more like that and, and others that don't. I actually do think the big breakaway has got that touch of class and he's one of those horses that, you know, I think, we, you know, I was talking to Simon briefly before and we probably expected too much of him because he burst onto the scene with this, you know, flashy win at Chepstow mm. uh, early in his career and we've been waiting for him to to turn into a top class horse when what he is is an out and out stayer and he went beyond three mile for the first time last Last time, first time out this season, and has run what probably a career best. I think it's a joint career best on figures. I'd be inclined to upgrade it anyway because I think the winner he only just got beat by Fontaine Collins of Venetia Williams. I think that was a that's a very very well handicapped horse. Uh, he did his normal run in snatches a bit. Um, looked like he was struggling early on, and then suddenly he's come back on the bridle, turning for home. They've pulled eleven lengths clear of the rest. He's only just got chinned. He flew the last. I mean, he can throw in some some really sloppy jumps and some slow jumps, but he flew the last there. Uh, to just suggest to me, he's got no fear of fences. He's just a bit cumbersome sometimes. So yeah. going a, a Welsh national pace, as it were, I think that'll suit him. I think he's, he's certainly built uh, to carry weight. I think he's going to run a really big, really, really big race for the Tizards. I did back in the hope that they it would get a lot of softer three of uh, the two amigos. Uh, because um, I got wind of the fact that a few of the top might not run and uh, he would squeeze into the handicap, uh, which he has. He's still got to get in. He needs three to come out. Uh, but he's run three times at Chepstow and he's been fifth in this in 2019, uh, second in the 2020 run, which was run in January 21, uh, and also second in the, in the Chepstow trial. So he's got good form there and he's £15 lower than when he last ran in this race. And I think he's got a big shot. But I think he's probably going to want a bit more rain. OK, a uh, couple then uh, for the uh, the Welsh National. Uh, Keith, quickly, any uh, you like a staying chase? Any angles for you? 
do um, I've got to have a proper look after the uh, the decks come out on Boxing Day. I've had a little look already. I mean, we've got Pat's fancy in here who's been aimed at this race for every bit as long as Braid Man's game's been aimed at the King George and possibly longer. It's always been the race for him and done nothing to dissuade me really from that view. The only bad run of his life really was uh, at the Cheltenham Festival in March. The other one I would just mention at a price has already been talked about actually is Trucker's Lodge. Now, this is very much from the sort of five days out angle because... I got the distinct impression he was going to run the he, Freddie Ginger rode him in that Fontaine Calandre race we talked about and I wondered if he'd been earmarked as, as Freddie's ride for this race and obviously uh, very poignant for Freddie to have a ride in this race but Trucker's Lodge also was third in this race last year I say last year it was actually no it wasn't it wasn't time last year uh, finished third in this race he was six pounds higher that day behind I will do it uh, and he finished third in it and he's, he's, he's six pounds lower now Freddie takes seven pounds off too so uh, he looks like he could have been laid out for another go at this race, and he's much better handicapped than he was. He might be one of the horses that wants a bit more rain. He's won Midlands Nationals and whatnot in the past, but uh, he was 25-33s and, and, and thought he was worth a look. But it's another race that I'll have a, a really good look at on Boxing Day once the decks come out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, wetting the appetite then for the, uh, the Commonwealth National on the 27th. Quick price boost time before we get stuck into Kempton. Yeah, we've got an in the nose special, a quick wave to win by over five lengths. That's 10 to 1 from 8 to 1. Obviously, currently priced at uh, I think 5 to 1 in the betting. I'm trying to have a quick look. He is 9 to 2 in the betting. So, yeah, so 10 to 1 if you think he's going to win uh, and win by over five lengths. Okay, quick wave uh, to win by over five lengths. 10 to 1 out from 8 to 1 then if you think he's going to uh, bolt up for Venetia Williams in the Welsh National. That, of course, coming on the 27th. Uh, and uh, by uh, by the time those debts come through, well, you'd be uh, well and truly stuck in uh, to uh, to the Boxing Day action. And uh, let's go and look at, uh, at Kempton's car. Like I said, we've got a bit of a, uh, a bonus with the long walk. We've got a, a proper lineup of uh, a grade one horses in the King George, of course. Uh, we've got possibly the... Uh, the best national hunt horse uh, on the planet uh, running as well, prohibitively short odds, uh, and plenty much more besides including uh, a two-mile novice's hurdle with uh, lots of form on the table as well. Uh, Rubord is 11-4 for the opener, <coughs> Imago Lord 100-30, Rare Edition is 7-2, Father of Jazz 9-2, uh, Throne Hall is 8-1 away, The Lad 11s, 12-1 Mamoon Star, uh, and 28-1 to 1 bar those in the opener, Paul Keeley. A, a nice little field here of 10 to go to war with. Uh, and you've got different types. So you've got Rubord, who's been uh, making hay around Taunton, not beating a great deal, but skipping away, uh, enjoying life. Uh, and then you've got horses like Iberico Lord, who we was thrown at the deep end. We don't quite know how good he, he is. A few off the flat have been running well. It's um, not a bad opener. Yeah, it's a surprising because obviously you got some really short price winners this in the past. I think mm. it was threes on Boomfield Berg last year, the ill fated Boomfield Berg. Some very decent horses have won it in the past. Uh, and the interesting thing here is the ground as well. Uh, they had 18 mil at Kempton today. And one of the websites I look at is forecasting 19 mil on Sunday, on, mm. on Christmas Day. So it's going to be significantly more testing at Kempton than Chepstow then, obviously. Oh, significantly more. Not only significantly more, but the hurdles going stick was 4.9. Uh, when they measured it today. It hasn't been as low as that since this meeting in 2017. Mm. Uh, okay. So we're not just talking about slightly soft ground, we could be talking about borderline heavy ground. In fact, 4.9 suggests it's already heavy today, although it can dry quite quickly. If they, if they do get the thick end of what one website I use as forecast, then it's going to be extremely tested. Uh, that worries me for Rubald. He's one done, uh, his two wins have come on decent ground. He's, his form in France is just a question whether he's going to really like it deep, just judging what he did on the flat. Uh, so that will worry me. I'd be less worried about Rare Edition, who's on a four-timer. He was he went very close in a point on soft ground uh, a couple of, well in in December 21, uh, and the winner of that race is unbeaten on heavy ground since two runs on heavy ground since. So I think there's a good sign that he won't have a problem with it, having done all his rules racing on good ground. Uh, I think a way the lad has guaranteed stamina. Mm. Uh, I'd say I was gonna, would, the figures. He, he's the one who's, who's got consistent soft ground numbers. Yeah, yeah. He's got you know he you know he he's the one that's going to be an each way price uh, and could easily run very well very well dropping back in trip. He got ran out of it last time, but I think Crambo's an okay horse. He was only beaten four lengths. Uh, in that race at Ascot last time, and I think the soft round won't the, the bother him. Bolted up the other day as well. Yeah, I think that's a fair piece. I think that's a fair piece of form. I mean, you know, official ratings say Rare Edition is rated 130, and he's rated only 119. I'm not sure there's that much between them, and he is getting eight pound anyway. 
Okay. So you know, those would be my two against the field. Okay, with soft ground potentially uh, in the uh, the offering for at Kempton. If it um, is uh, about as soft as it was in 2017, that year's renewal was won by If the Cap Fits, uh, Keith, who t- ended up being a, a three miler pretty much. So, yeah, stamina might well be the uh, the essence uh, that you need for this opener at Kempton. What did you like? Uh, yeah, well, you can see that. But you've also had horses like um, Altior's won this race and, you know, it, it, horses that have and ended up being two milers in essence, although Altio obviously always could have gone up in trip, he just never needed to, he was that good. Uh, I was so been really impressed with the speed reward show. I've expected soft ground on Monday. I don't look at the same sites Keels does, but it was already looking borderline before they got the rain at Kenton this afternoon between good to soft and soft. So it'll be properly soft now and uh, I'm expecting just soft ground on, on Monday. It was the horse he's beaten in this toy round taunt of him, uh, Dancing Harry and Brentford Hope, who you'll know as decent flat horses. You know, these are sort of like 90 level flat horses. And then Brentford Hope in particular, he made him look pretty slow, I thought. So this is obviously a horse that's got loads and loads of speed. This is a is ultimately two miles run kept and is, is quite a speedy test for these horses. I'm very impressed with his speed he's shown and the way he's gone about things. He's been very professional. So I, I thought he was the right favourite and uh, thought he was he was a decent one to get you off on a winner. OK, 11-4 rewarded uh, for the opener at uh, Kempton. Uh, yeah, an uh, untypically competitive opener uh, at uh, Kempton on Boxing Day, Simon. Yeah, cracker, isn't it? I mean, um, Nicky Henderson's got a great record in the race. He's won it five times in 10 years. Iberica Lord's quite interesting in that he kind of bombed at Cheltenham, but... I think there were excuses that day. It was obviously quite good ground. He, he didn't jump particularly well. Um, and, and he was a short price that day. He's, he's pretty short in this, actually. And, and I just wonder whether his French bread, that soft ground might really suit him. Because I'm not convinced uh, Rare Edition, well, he's, all his, 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 his form under rules has been on good ground. Ruble around ta- Taunton uh, on good ground. So on this, what is, as, as the guys have set up, is going to be probably a real test, a very different ground to their experience. It might be worth going for a bit of a boil over, but uh, uh, Iberico Lord actually sort of priced on the, the Henderson form as much as anything. So not easy to find. Father of Jazz, again, is he a horse who's going to love the soft ground? Very little to, to know from his flat form. Um, but I think it's a, from a bookie point of view, I think he'll be looking to take on uh, some of the shorter priced horses in this because I think it could turn, turn into a real test and we could get a shock. Yeah, uh, I think you might be right. I was even looking at Mamoon Star, not completely out of it, uh, on, uh, on his form, his best run when it came in a soft ground bumper at, uh, at Cheltenham. Iberico Lord for Racing Demon. Uh, of course, the horse who finished last in that race did uh, bolt up at Hereford a couple of days ago as well. Uh, and uh, Music Mike says Hendo has a 48% strike rate at Kempton uh, Festival with his hurdlers. So worth uh, watching any Henderson horses. Iberico Lord is one of those. But the opener keels? Yeah, I just favour rare edition over a way the lad who's probably the each way bet. Okay, rare edition with away the lad. Keith? Yeah, reward for me a fairly straight away one in the, in the first. Okay, Simon? Yeah, I thought away the lad each way. Looks like a proper stayer might relish the soft ground. Okay, and this is one of those races where I'm thrilled that I'm presenting and I can actually sit out <laughs> selecting because um, I started to go through this race and thought, okay, first eight have got a chance. Um, maybe we should, uh, maybe I'll just watch the. The 10 past 12. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've got the long walk hurdle, uh, of course, a, a bit of a, a bonus into the mix at uh, Kempton. Of course, uh, a wonderful thing to do on a, on a boxing day, uh, have a nice long walk. And you've got a second one after your morning one. Uh, Champ is 2 to 1 favourite here. Miranda 5 to 2. Uh, Paisley Park is 7 to 2. Goshen is 9 to 2. Uh, Not So Sleepy is 12 to 1 at the outsider of the bunch. So you've got a couple of guaranteed proper grade one stayers in Champa Paisley Park, who served up a right old treat last time out as well uh, at Newbury. Uh, then you've got Goshen and Not So Sleepy, who are very classy horses in their own right, but are unproven over the trip, even the, though they're stayers on the flat. And then you've got the Mayor Miranda throwing a, uh, a bit of a, uh, an interesting angle into the mix as well, Keith. So um, a couple of horses who would have run. Uh, Botox has probably the most uh, notable. Don't turn up in this race, but um, it's still a good one. It's still a good one, yeah, and it's the sort of race where if you're ever going to have a, a go at a horse coming and breaking this division, certainly the British element of it apart, it's the chance to do it, isn't it? Because long walk at Ascot, it's a big stiff finish there. You'd have had a lot more questions to answer about a horse like Goshen staying this far, but around Kempton, where they do was round a little bit more, it's the type of take a chance on them, isn't it? I mean, you tell me, you tell me, Keith. That's what you hear. I mean, I, I, taking well, a chance on Goshen. We've, I won't I mean, do my noddy impression. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, I mean, Goshen yeah, takes a chance every time he runs, doesn't he? So you might as well have a, have a crack at something different. Oh, he does now. And 
but, I mean, Champ and Paisley Park, they sell up some really good races, but Champ's not exactly the most straightforward, and Paisley Park has, you know, you wouldn't think Kempton's as good a track for him as, as Ascot would necessarily be, and, you know, we talk about these horses, yes, on official ratings, he has a few pounds to find on them, but as a horse runner at 160 in his team, I grade one, really run at 160 in the same way Goshen would be if he was doing it at two miles, potentially not. So it, it's, it's a weak, he's going into a weak division is sort of the angle. He's obviously this huge talent. He's at a track that should suit him. It's all going right-handed. It's a relative speed track. If you're ever going to have a go at him exploding this staying chase, staying hurdle division in Britain, I think it's got to be under these conditions. So I think you've absolutely just got to, to take your chance on Goshen in this race. Okay, Goshen then is a yeah, nine to two shot. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly, he's not short of stamina in... Well, no, he, I mean, he powered, he, away, he powered away at Ascot last time. I mean, that was only two mile three and a half, but I mean, he was almost level with uh, the runner up two out, and he's got eight and a half lengths clear in, in the end, and that was brewing up a storm, who does stay the trip really well. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think if he gets the trip, he's going to go very close. I think his level of form is right up there with what Champ and Paisley Park are capable of now. And I think that's the important thing. You've got to remember, mm -hmm. in a few days' turn, they, they turn 11. Uh, and, you know, Champ managed to get beat in a bump around here in his early years, the only time he ran here, when odds on. Uh, and, you know, even the trainer is on record as saying, it's saying she doesn't think Kempton's going to suit Paisley Park. It's a flat track. It's, it's easy. The ground might uh, make it more of a test. But, I mean, Paisley Park, she's taken, she's taken Paisley Park out because of um, really bad ground before, because she doesn't think he likes it. He's got form on it, obviously, but Goshen loves it. Uh, he'll skip round. Uh, you could make a similar case for not so sleepy staying because he's going up the trip as well. I prefer Gosh because he's got younger legs, but not so sleepy's been placing the Cesaris three times, isn't he? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So he's not a mug. And and the other one we have, the other one we have in the race, he's the most bafflingly priced horse I have ever seen, and that's Miranda, who's five to mm. two and should be tens at least. She is, you know, she won a three runner race last time on a step up of three miles, and when they plodded round. She was around 15 lengths faster than the other winner on the card over the same trip, but that was a 10-year-old rate at 113, carrying seven pound more. Uh, it, it was no proper test of stamina at all. She was getting weight from two horses rated inferior to her uh, in that race. The handicapper upped her just a solitary pound to 146, which makes her the lowest rated in the field by 11 pounds, mm. and she's second favourite. Absolutely mad. Should be I mean, tense. she's receiving seven, of course. She's so receiving kind of... seven at all, but even with the seven pounds, she comes out the worst horse in the race. Yeah. And, you know, she's, that was a 16th run over hurdles. Right? She got beat in a, in, a in a class two handicap at Worcester, of all places, <laughs> off a mark of 145 the time before. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. If, if, if she's not a monster drifter on the day, I cannot, I will, you know, just won't understand. I'll have to get stuck in. Okay, there you go. Um, <laughs> she is two from two at Kempton. And, hey, um, I don't care about that. It's a different class, isn't it? She, you know, until until that last run, she had never run an RPR better than 144. And we're yeah. now going to believe that she's a grade one stayer. Oh, yeah, I, was, I wasn't arguing. Like, again, yeah. I was just, you know. Absolutely just, mad. Anyone I trying, in my head, I'm trying bonkers. to work out why she's that price, yeah. I guess. Um, <laughs> but she's the highest I've ever seen. Yeah, honestly, five to two uh, to uh, Miranda, um, possibly uh, the worst price horse on the uh, on the day. Are you a fan of Miranda, the horse or the the sitcom, Simon? Up to you. Neither, really, to be honest. No, I'm I'm complete. I must admit, in looking at this race, I'm completely in agreement with Paul Keeley. I mean, the the um, there was a three runner listed mares contest at Kempton last time. I don't even think she started favour for that. Okay, she won it well, but I mean, she was beaten, well beaten in the Imperial Cup. I know it's a different trip of one four six on testing ground last March. I just don't get it at all. And, you know, I think I, I hear what Paul's saying about Champ and Paisley Park, you know, turning 11. But these are wonderfully consistent leaders of the division in the UK. You know, they, 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 Champ was hugely impressive in last year's long war. They fought out that wonderful battle at Newbury. In that race, I felt Prashema was playing the Miranda role in that, where I was looking at that race thinking, really? I know he went round well at Weatherby, but is Prashema suddenly, you know, the same as Champ and Paisley Park? OK, it's hindsight there saying, well, wasn't I clever? But I just feel it's very easy to sort of almost ignore the, the level at which these 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 consistent performers are performing. And I I think when Kempton turns soft, and if it's going to be heavy, suddenly the, the speediness of the track changes. It becomes a real test. I actually think this is going to be a real test. If it's going to be, if we're going to get into the rain, we, we, there's not an awful lot of time to get breathers around Kempton. Um, I hear what Paul says about Paisley Park being sometimes taken out when the ground's really testing. But if they run Paisley Park, and I hope they do, I actually think he, a 72 is a massive price. You know, the fact that it's bigger than Miranda is crazy. Uh, Champ and Paisley Park, and clear is not a lot between them, but Champ tends to explode first time out. Uh, and Goshen, 
again, I can hear what the guys are saying, but it's a, it's going to be a very testing three mile, I think, around Kempton. Um, and I'd rather back a horse who just stays. And, and you know, so at the prices, I think it's a great little long walk. I think it's wonderful to run at Kempton because it adds a different dimension. Mm. And I'll be with Paisley Park all day. Paisley Park, seven to two then. Um, <laughs> Dave Lowe, one of the producers outside, has just messaged in to say, Miranda is Robbie Wilder's nap of the festive period. So you're going oh, against... Dear, right. we're, going to, we're going to have to talk to him. We are. We are. <laughs> He yeah. might be right, Paul. Yeah, of course he might be. It's all about opinions, this game, isn't it? But, I mean, that's the thing about Robbie. Oh, yeah. Robbie is... And, you know, you're perfectly entitled to have a wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's great strength is, is not thinking like anyone else, which obviously sometimes makes it your weakness, but it might make, be our yeah. weakness here. So, uh, Champ probably wins by default, says, uh, says Music Mike. But the ground could be the, uh, the interesting angle here, because, um, yeah, um, obviously your Champs and your Paisley Parks haven't run on anything this testing for a while. Uh, but 2-1, to one, Champ, Miranda 5-2. to two. Uh, Keels, you are going with Goshen? Yeah. Goshen got we got really have a good chance. If he stays, he's as good as them at a shorter trip. If he stays, he'll be as good or better. Okay. And uh, and Keith, you're taking a chance with uh, with him as well. Oh yeah, Goshen. He's he's almost certainly the best horse in this race. Okay. And uh, and Simon. Yeah, I tend to be. I tend to always side with the the old veterans. The uh, you know the, the and so Paisley part for me. Okay, Paisley Park at seven to two again. I don't, I don't want to touch this to the barge pole. It's going to be an absolute <laughs> cracking race, but I'm not backing in it. Uh, good luck to you guys. Good luck to you. Uh, and uh, the one twenty, the, the corner star novices chase uh, is uh, is up next, where uh, we have another um, uh, short price uh, Paul Nichols uh, favourite uh, or pairing here. The shape of McFabulous and Jolino Bello six to five and three to one. Uh, Gallia de Lito has been well back four to one. Uh, Time Hill is five to one. Mortlack is 28 to 1 uh, and again this was another race uh keels is looking at me like he, he's got a strong opinion in this uh, for this uh, but i'm going to go to keith uh for i'm going to go keith for this one no, let's really? go to keels first one for this one because <laughs> mcfabulous six to five Jolino bello three to one um again but fabulous uh, not the best hurdler in the race not the best chaser in the race yet like miranda he's, he's another six to five shot oh I, but he is the best isn't he he's the best hurdler in the race official rating wise he's Surely Time Hill was better than him, wasn't he? Oh, Time Hill was, yeah, but we saw how Time Hill jumped at, at Newby, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, but I'm just... Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm <laughs> yeah. not talking about his jumping. I'm oh, talking no, about no, no, no. I'm saying oh, he's, not, okay. he's not the best... Oh, yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but hang on. But Fabulous is this, probably the second best horse in the race. It's not like... It's not like the I said it, I said it it's it's not second like, best. It's not like the worst horse in the race, as per Miranda, by, yeah. by whatever. Come on. Come on. All right, guys. Anyway, nothing you've right. said has argued against okay, anything no. I've said. Okay, not the best herder in the race. However, has already thumped Tyne Hill, who cannot, who cannot <laughs> jump. All right. Uh, however, the softer the ground gets, the bigger a lame at Fabulous becomes. Because mm. I never in a million years had him down as a stayer at yep. three mile. And I think a plod round newbie on good ground in a three runner race against a clumsy horse and the outclass Mortlach, who was 40 to one here, I think, and his, well, was beaten only eight and a half lengths. Is no evidence that he gets the trip, and I think he'll get found out when it gets really, uh, if it gets really sticky. Uh, I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, Paul Nichols took him out of the Coal Cup last year when it chucked it down with rain, and he said something else then when it chucked it down with rain uh, <laughs> on the Wednesday. Uh, so although he says he'll hand on the ground, and he does have form on the ground, and he does like a right-handed track, and he does like Kempton, I think three mile on sticky ground will find him right out. Uh, you could easily make. Uh, Case for Gelino Bello, but I thought I think Gallia de Lito will just win. Uh, it was a massive price earlier on, uh, earlier on today, but uh, when the decks were made, she jumped like an absolute stag first on that. It looked like a complete natural. It was only two mile, one and a half furlong. She beat Mia Grace by nine and something lengths on heavy ground at Bangor. Uh, that one's come out and won since in handicap company. Uh, she wasn't as good as these over hurdles, but she's going to be a miles better chaser. She's by Sadler Maker, who's renowned for getting soft ground staying. Chasers think Bristol Demire for a start. Yeah. Uh, she's won a point, um, so she will stay. She, the Dan Skelton was talking about her going for a three mile novice at Doncaster at the end of last season. Uh, for whatever reason, she didn't go there, but uh, I think she's, you know, I think she's going to go very, very close at the very least. Okay, uh, Gallia de Lito then is a four to one shot. Yeah, it was I think almost double figures um, when I was looking at this race uh, earlier on today. Uh, we're going to come to you, Keith, but uh, that was. It's quite an experience there uh, with uh, with Keels, an experience I can replicate over Christmas where I say something and someone argues against something I haven't said. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty much the whole of Christmas, isn't it, with your family? Uh, you were trying to paint him in the same light as Miranda, which is a little bit unfair. Yeah, that's 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 fair enough. <laughs> uh, but uh, Keith, what did you make of this contest? Because I thought um, I thought Jolino Bella was the most interested of the uh, of the Nichols pairing here. Um, I know he made heavy weather of it at Weatherby and 
He only beat one horse at Exeter last time out, but it was a good horse. He absolutely mullered him, and yeah, I thought it was a little bit interesting. Uh, and he won't mind the ground if he goes soft either. I, I can see that. Yeah, I, I can definitely see him being a better chaser than McFabulous, and definitely being a better staying chaser than McFabulous in time. I agree with a lot of what Keel said. I was doubly gutted actually when you led into this race because, firstly, I realised when you went to Keel's, I know that him and I have a very similar view in this race, and I also hadn't realised Gayla de Little had gone so short. Yeah. She was much bigger than that this morning. Um, there were six horses in this race at the five-day stage, and one of them was Bally Griffin Cottage, the Dan Skelton horse. That was meant to be the Dan Skelton the first string, I think. But I don't know if he's met a setback or what. We'll hopefully find out in the coming days because he's very exciting. But this understudy's just got a right chance. Yes, yeah, she couldn't have taken to it better at Bangor. And yes, we talk about listed uh, mayors-only races and, and rightly denigrate them in, in the case of Miranda. But as, as Keel said, Mia Grace came out with a handicap of 130 next time. So to make her look an absolute monkey, which is what Gala de, de Lito did at Bangor, is, is no mean feat at all. She has won a point already. Uh, just looks like a completely different animal over fences. Some of these skilled horses can be like that, as we know. He, he gets them jumping really well, and, and we, we leave their hurdles from behind very, very quickly. She's already mid-140s class. She gets a £7 mirrors allowance. So she's already looking at the foothills in the mid-150s, which is what you need to, to win this sort of race. She was an absolutely smashing bet at eight nine to one earlier today. She's still a decent enough bet at four to one. Uh, she's the one I'm looking at in this race. Okay, Gallia de Lito then has been well back. We're starting to wonder why the price has shortened up, Simon. It appears that um, it's because everyone mm. fancies her. Yeah, I think she's got a great chance. Dan Skelton um, in his blog for our sister company, Labrooks, um, wrote actually, we were due to run Bally Griffin Cottage, but I wasn't 100% happy with him, so he's fine, but just wasn't quite right for the race. I've also wanted to run this mare. I always wanted to run this mare here or in the dipper. She definitely stays three miles. The ground should be perfect. She'll be in receipt of seven pounds. I'm very happy she's in this race and she jumped great this morning. So that was from a conversation with Dan this morning. So I think everything is pointing to a good run from her. Uh, I think that fabulous. It looks like a, he really has improved for his step, you know, move from hurdles to fence as well. But I think Paul's, Paul's made the point about the, you know, the, the ground and the test. That would be the concern for him. And Time Hill just doesn't look like a, a chaser. It looks like he's, he won't be as good a chaser as he was a herder. So um, I think you can understand why the money's for Galli de Lito. Do you know what the, uh, the, the last eight-year-old to win this race was, uh, Simon? No, I don't. It was Joe, <laughs> Joe Lively. Ah, uh, tis odds. Tis odds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, in the past, I think it's 15 years, uh, 16 eight-year-olds have run, only one of has won, and that was, uh, that was Joe Lively. So um, uh, just a point, because McFabulous and Time Hill, of course, are... Classy yeah. horses, but they are getting on a little bit. And we've got a bit of an old-timers double as well, I think, Simon. We have, yeah. The In The No Special is the champ and McFabulous both to win it, uh, the double for the, the those two consecutive races, 6-1 to one from 5-1. to one. So 6-1 to one if you fancy McFabulous and champ. OK, there you go. Uh, but um, you don't, Keels, because you are going with... I am going with Gallia de Lito. There you go. And uh, Mr Keith Melrose, you are agreeing? Yes, I am. Gallia de Lito for me. OK, um, I'll finally have an opinion, because uh, I do think Jolino Bella is very interesting. I do think he beat a good horse last time, Matt. He just keeps on, he keeps on winning now. He seems to have got into that rhythm, uh, and uh, he's doing good figures, good performances. He jumps well, he stays, he, shouldn't, he should handle the ground. I mean, to be fair, if McFabulous comes out, you might end up being, uh, being the same price as him, but that might make things a little bit different. Simon, what did you make of it? Yeah, I'm Gallia de Lito as well, three of us. OK, there you go. Three for the, the Mayor, Gallia de Lito, and I'll go with Jolino Bello in the Cordo Star Novices Chase. Um, the, the Christmas Hurdle is next, uh, which uh, is a, an absolute cracker. If you are Constitution Hill, um, it's, uh, it's a cracking run for, for second or third, potentially. So Royal will be uh, hunting around, pick up some prize money. Uh, Mattia, of course, uh, last seen winning a, a very... A valuable flat handicap here in, uh, in the November handicap at Doncaster. Highway 102, Chris Gord has got a few at Kempton, but uh, they'll be hurdling around, having a nice chat, um, wondering whether uh, they're going to have to continue to see the backside of the best horse of, the genera of a generation in the shape of Constitution Hill. It's now 1-8. to eight. So Epiton is 8-1, to one, so Royal 11's Metier 40s and Highway 102 is 50-1. to one. Keith, you are a, a ratings man, a numbers man, and Constitution Hill uh, bettered every run that Hurricane Fly ever did in his career last time out um, and we've uh, we've barely seen the start of him so um, the hype is is justified but he is of course one to eight and uh, we uh, we do have to keep 
just keep seeing him come to the track and bolt up at short odds until he meets a, a genuine challenger, I guess. Will he ever? Yeah, the, well, that's, that's the question, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, there is that question. I mean, it'd be nice. It'd be lovely if he did get a that kind of um, that Nadal, Federer, Djokovic kind of generation of, of champion hurdles. I mean, if you had two or three, really, really go head to head. But currently, no, you're probably right. We won't. Unless for Seal no, um, uh, for Seal Vega, of course, lives up to the uh, right. the hype. Well, maybe a horse will race Facil Vega at some point. We'll get to see what he's about. But the Corsican Hill, as you absolutely rightly say, he runs good times as well as big figures. You know, and he's, I can't think of a jumps horse uh, that's, that's, you know, every run of this horse is an event now. And he's only had, what, four runs under rules in his whole life. I've never known that with a jumps horse. You know, you get them on the flat, for instance, you know, horses having its fourth run in a guineas or whatever. But I've just never known the like of a jumps. Horse is an absolute phenomenon. Can't see anything beating him. You know, the ground is, it won't be different because he's won a toll worth on heavy ground. Sandown's hurdles track in the midwinter is as heavy as anywhere. So that's not going to get him beat. It's only a freak occurrence that gets him beat at the moment. He's an absolute joy to watch. I'll look forward to it, even though there's no chance I'll be betting in the race. No, it's just a its a matter of uh, trying to guess how far. Or, or what, what you want to see for Constitution Hill is, is another... Something emerged from the box of tricks because it is such such early days. We don't quite know. Yeah, what well, he's the good thing for. about him is, is that when he's asked to go, he goes. Yeah, it's not one of those where, you know, you've got a Barry Gerrity sitting on Bouverdale and you just ask him after the last and go yeah. like that. You, you know, he went away from yeah. the Newcastle and stretched them and just got them well off it. Like, you know, and he puts distance between them, which and that's how you run fit good fit big figures, isn't it? Like yeah, yeah by doing by doing so. So. Uh, I'm sure he won't be given a hard time. He's not going to have a hard time, but he didn't have a hard time when he won by 12 I was going to say, he's, not, he's he? doing big figures like, without you know having I mean? a hard time. He's doing it easily. So, yeah, it, to me, it just looks an incredible horse. He is potentially the best hurdler I've ever seen. Uh, you know, you, you know, to be a real great, you need longevity to go with it, don't you? Yeah. Like, you know, and he's only at the start, but um, it, it just looks amazing. I'm kind of hoping that State Man will do something really good mm. uh, uh, at some point because he looked, he looked very good when he won. Uh, the other day, um, he's still got to he's still got to find another stone, though, isn't he? Like you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, you know, that's the thing. But at least it looks like you know there is another decent horse coming over from Ireland because I think I don't think it honeysuckle um, would get him off the bridle. No, but obviously if you do, yeah, if you do Constitution Hill State Man and honeysuckle and a champion hurdle, even if nobody else turns up, that's still a fascinating. Oh, race of course as it well. is. Yes. Yeah, of course it is. So uh, Constitution Hill one to eight, then finally at the Christmas hurdle. Um, Simon, have we got distance betting? Have we got any uh, anything to? to try and um, make this a little bit more interesting betting-wise, obviously it's fascinating racing-wise. I know. Well, listen, you, you decide not to bet in the first two races, then you can't really ever bet in this race. It's going to be a quite old betting day at Kempton for the Ross Friday. Look, there's, some others. There's, there's, 11, <laughs> there's 11 meetings on Boxing Day, Simon. So don't worry, I'll find plenty exactly, of bets. Exactly, exactly. Um, but look, yeah, we're offering a, a special to win by over 11 lengths, uh, even money from four to six, and at least with those distance um, specials, uh, the way he's ridden, the way he's, they decide to ride him is to really, you know, win by as far as they possibly can to be as impressive as they can, which is great. So they've always got a chance. Uh, Epitont is the eight to one second favourite. In terms of the champion hurdle betting, Constitution Hills two to seven. And Epitont of the ones he's racing against at Kempton is the shortest in the betting at 33. So it should be relatively straightforward. Uh, to Paul's point, State Man runs on Thursday against Sharjah and Cohen Island. He's four to nine to win that race. And hopefully he'll come through that. Uh, and progress towards the champion herd. And I imagine Honeysuckle will next run in the Irish champion um, at the Dublin Festival, I suppose, would be next, her next start. So hopefully she can get back on the winning thread. Because we can do with uh, though, you know, them uh, showing her showing constitutional some competition at Cheltenham. But, but I think the shape of the Kempton card, it's great. The fact that we've got the long walk added on, some really competitive handicaps at the back end, you can, you can live with the fact that this is in many ways an exhibition because it's an exhibition by... A jumping phenomenon. So it's, it's got everything this Kempton Cup. Yeah, I mean, to betting purposes, it's kind of like the half time show, isn't it? Yes. Um, obviously, from a racing perspective, it's, it's possibly the, the the best. The problem is when you've got the best horse you're going to see in a, uh, in a in a generation, there's nothing else to match him. It, it is just a bit of a, a victory march, which is um, which is it's great well, to it, see. It, 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 is, it is, but I suppose it's not quite like when Frankel had done it ten times. You kind yeah, of almost fair. just knew he would. It's, it's early yeah. enough in Constitutional Hill career that you're still kind of thinking, is it? And yeah, Kempton's the sort of track. It's a different sort of track for him, you mm. know. Um, I mean, it shouldn't be it shouldn't present any, any problem for him, but um, no, I know what you mean. It, but it's I think 
it's early enough in his career, there's still a bit of a jaw-dropping moment every time yeah. he goes and does it. You know? that, that is true, and um, we're also not going to see him retire to stud at the end of this year as well, which is <laughs> the, right, the bonus right. of these National Hunt horses. But uh, of course, yeah. Shushan Hill is a one-to-eight shot for the Christmas hurdle, uh, and uh, will hopefully uh, put on another display of uh, exemplary jumping and uh, uh, maybe show us um, well, a few more gears. How many has he got? Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the question. But if you think he's going to win by over 11 lengths, he's even money from four to six. Uh, next up, of course, it is the feature on Boxing Day at the, uh, the Labrox King George. Uh, and we have a cracking little field, nine of them lining up, uh, 17 grade one wins between them. Uh, and L'Empresse is 7-4 to four favourite, ahead of Brave Man's Game 9-4. Envoir Allen is 6-1, to one. Hitman is 13-2, to two. Royal Pagai is 16-1, to 18-1, to one. Frodon, 20s, Ahoy Senor. El Dorado Allen is 25-1, to one. Uh, Frodon, uh, I think he's uh, roughly the same price as well. Uh, and uh, we've also, in fact, Frodon's already what we're talking about. Uh, Miller's Bank is the one I haven't mentioned, he's the outsider of this nine. But like I said, 17 grade ones between them. Uh, and it has been a bit of a transitional year in the National Hunt game uh, as uh, a few of the, uh, uh, the defending champs get, uh, get beaten. Uh, and the interesting thing about the King George this year, of course, Keels, is that it's pretty much wide open for someone else to, to, uh, to stamp their authority on it. Um, last year was obviously a bit of a funny one. It was a pretty brutal race, Tornado Fire, a bit of a, a shock. But We've got some really, I mean, the first four at single figures are unexposed, classy, genuine grade one horses. It's a, uh, it's a cracker. Yeah, it's a, it's a much better race than it actually looked like being for a long time, isn't mm. it? Uh, you know, and you know, I, ha I sort of know my colours to the Master Hitman a long way out uh, in the hope that the race would cut up and you wouldn't get all these big guns coming. I and mean, obviously we haven't got Aplutar, we haven't got Alaho. Uh, uh, and we and we haven't got Galloping de Champ, uh, but we were also not supposed to have Long Press, yeah. who uh, suddenly parachuted in. They suddenly decided, well, yeah, actually, you can go there. Now I don't understand why. I mean, part of the reason they're talking about him not going there was it's a flat, sharp track, and uh, and the ground doesn't get soft enough. And and yet the ground at Newcastle last time was good. It was faster than it was when he was pulled out at Ascot the previous week. Um, I know it officially says otherwise, but Basin Post and time form say it was good, uh, and it looked pretty quick. Uh, and he spent all of last, well, the vast majority of last season winning over two and a half miles on right-handed tracks. So, I mean, there shouldn't be any problems for no. him at all. And it in, should be the ideal race. In my really. eyes, he deserves to be a very short price favourite for this. I was really impressed with him in Newcastle last time. Yeah. He, he, he won the rehearsal chase. He beat into overdrive, who was on a five-timer and won really easily the time before. Uh, and he, didn't, he only needed the rain shaken at him. Uh, and he was giving him twenty-six pounds, and you know it was a really, really good weight, uh, weight-giving performance. And you know the th the third Happy Go Lucky was another one that's a, you know was really progressive before his break, uh, and, and and had been given a little bit of a chance for his absence as well. I think you know the right two horses were behind him, mm. uh, and he fairly toyed with them. And you know he'll stay better than Brave Man's Game. I'm not a hundred percent convinced mm. that he's an out and out stayer as well. And if you give him the mud. Uh, I think he might. I think he might struggle. Uh, official ratings say, "Oh, he's 170. Brave Man's Game is 164. The second best horse in the race is actually Envoy, Envoy Len, who's uh, you know who came out and and won it damn well. But he won it damn well for like something like the fourth year on the spin or something, didn't he, at that meeting? And you just wonder whether whether a bit like Champ coming out and winning at Newbury, that's his track. Uh, um, well, to be fair, it is flat. You know, Kempton is flat and right-handed, and this might be the way he likes to go." Um, I'm full of hope that Hitman will will stay three miles, but you're going to have to now yeah, because yeah. it's going to be very soft. But he doesn't actually have any problem with soft ground at all. Um, I just hope that he gets the trip. If he does, if he improves for it, he's now got to improve more than I thought he was going to have to. And yeah. that, that, that's my issue with him. You uh, thought he was a, a, a kind of a step forward. Yeah. Like I mean, elite, he, yeah, it's, it? the market tells you that. I mean, I, I, I backed him at you know, 25s a couple of months ago, he went all the way down to threes. He's yeah. now back out to 13 to two. I reckon you'll get, I reckon you'll end up getting eight uh, because obviously Harry Cobden is on, yeah. is on Brave Man's game. So there's a few, the, there's market, a few, um, the market is going to reflect that. There's a few uh, favorites at bigger prices than Mike Shaw. Yeah, there's Whirlpool guys almost certainly guaranteed a short. Yeah. He's a course winner. 
who everyone knows loves bottomless ground. He's won two big handicaps at Haydock under big weights on, on, on really soft ground. You know, well, he, I, I mean, he, know, when I, he, his last win on soft ground was an RPR of 171. Yes. Which puts yeah, yeah. him long puts him right standard. Up there. Yeah, but it puts him right up there. Um, you know, he can carry weight. He's a, you know, he, he's a very decent horse. He's still only young, remember. He's only eight himself. Mm. Um, the issue is he had a setback. He was either going to run in the Betfair Chase or the Cold, Cold Gold Cup, uh, and he missed both. Uh, and it's where do we just you know first time out, a little bit of a little little bit of a worry. But I mean, in terms of form and price, they don't quite match up, do they? No, no. Um, uh, I mean, in terms of first time out, he's, he's 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 won both for the yard. But it's um, and and if he'd have come back when he was supposed to come back, they would have they would yeah, have been rusty, weren't they? Yeah. So it might actually be a blessing in it's disguise. A, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, you know it's a slightly difficult ask. Mm. I mean, I I like Brave Man's game, but I never saw. A, Three and a half length win from El Dorado Allen, getting three pounds, making yeah. you a five to four shot, which is what he was at one point. Yeah. I mean, it's just the form just isn't that good. Okay. And, and he was three lengths clear of um, El Dorado Allen between the last two and still the same at the line. It's not mm -hmm. like he was going away or anything. So, what I'm feeling is um, a Miranda McFabulous Brave Man's Game treble bolting up so far. It comes <laughs> the way things are going. It's always possible. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's a cracking King George. I'm going to come to you. I'll be wearing uh, this hat over my face if that hasn't gone the way out. <laughs> uh, Keith, um, Laurent Presse is not the first horse this, uh, this, uh, this calendar year that we've been talking about winning a, uh, a big handicap at Newcastle and trying to work out whether that's grade one form. The other one was Trushan, which we spent ages babbling about over the summer. Uh, L'Ompresse has gone up £6 for that rehearsal chase win. Are you with him or against him? Oh, I'm very much with him because the horse that Trushan beat didn't go into win the Roland Merrick next time. <laughs> Whereas I've backed, in, I've backed in overdrive to win that race uh, on, on Boxing Day 2. It's a smashing race, actually, the Roland Merrick. We're not covering mm. it here. You know, I, I, just, I think, honestly, we, I'm going to mention this. Not, I, I think the fact that Paul Nichols identified this race as the race for Brave Man's Game, you know, he said 2022 King George, he said it before the horse had jumped the fence in public. That's why he's still holding on to joint favouritism here, because I have to be careful in this show when Coral aren't going best price on a horse, but they were first in with long presses price this morning, made him 7-4 to favourite, and I thought, yeah, well done, you've spotted it. This horse is, is he even money shot? I think he might be. He's okay. just the best horse in the race. Is Breedman's game's form is not any better? It's, it's worse than on Royal Ends. Long press should be a short, a warm order for this. I, as I say, I've, I've backed him as soon as I got a bit of two to one post decks. I got it because he's not going to go off that price. He's going to go off five to four ish, uh, I think. And uh, and yeah, I just, I just see him being a much better horse than Breedman's game. May even do a forecast with on Royal End because I agree with Keels. I'm not certain Breedman's game is a proper proper stayer. He might be the sort of horse that ends up running in two mile four, two mile five races in time because he's got loads of speed, jumps really, really well. Uh, but long press is a proper three mile chaser, and I can I could just see him going off a bit shorter than this. Okay, uh, long press that is a, a seven to four shot. Um, I mean, if I was going to put a, a spanner in the way, so I would say we were talking about you were talking about the two mile novice chase has not been up to much, and I'm not looking at the the RSA, the Brown Advisory, whatever, and thinking, wow. He beat some absolute crackers there in the shape of Long Presse. But um, I'm just going to throw a couple others in because, it, again, a Hoy Senor, we need to talk about him because he's been uh, a beaten favourite twice so far. But that, that, ain't, that many clouds race last time out, that was the, the, the time was four seconds faster than any renewal of that race ever run. There's no way in hell that was good to soft ground. Uh, and uh, I know Weatherby was a bit disappointing, but if, I seen, if a hoist in your gets into a rhythm round here on, on rain softened ground, is, is he a 20 to 1 shot, Keith? Well, uh, yeah, I think Graham Wonder is going to back him, and I can sort of see the angle. The, the reason he's the price he is, is because it's already priced in that he's lost his head, isn't mm. it? On talent, he's not a 20 to 1 shot, he's a single figure shot here, but it is assumed that he's, he's just. Lost his mind a little bit. And it was a career, honest, best, first... uh, career best on, on RP. Uh, if, you know, if we're going it, on RPI, it was career best last time. Yeah, that's because I wanted to get Noble Yates nice and high for the Gold Cup. Yeah, fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and he still uh, came third, but, didn't he? You know? Yeah, well, he yeah. did. And he, he, took half a, he took half a mile to decide he wanted to race. You know, he tried, mm. he was running down the fences for the first half mile. He just did not look like a horse that was having the best time. So, I, I, yes, I can see why you make the case for him at 20 to 1. I'm not personally going to take it, but if anybody thinks they can see that, if anybody can make the case for why this horse still actually wants to race, then that's a price you can definitely look at. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the horses who, um, who have got a few sandwiches short of a picnic don't win this race, do they? Oh, no, wait, 2017 might bite. Uh, so, you know, these things do happen, I guess. Eldorado Island as well, uh, probably be uh, uh, plugging on for a place. He's run two crackers. And, uh, I mean, obviously, with the, uh, the sad passing of Q card as well, uh, Simon, I mean, it, it could be a very emotional, emotional Christmas period for the, uh, for the yard. And Eldorado Allen, he's... You know his, his his ability's not far off him getting into the frame for sure in this, and he he barely puts a foot wrong. Yeah, and I think and he ran quite well at Kempton last year in the Silver Niaka contest. You know he you know he before around the track. He's yeah, he's the sort of horse who could. I mean, we've seen some big price horses get placed in this race, and obviously last year it was the outside of the field who won it with Tornado Flyer. Um, so I think it's worth looking down the field at some of the bigger prices and trying to work out. And I think you could make a case for Eldorado Allen. You could make a case for Rob a guy on the ground. Brodon won the race two years ago actually really went too quick when you watched last year's race i think just you know Broden just went too quick on Froden, burned himself out but this year you know giving weight uh, a wing canton and um, bombed last time out but i think you know he could go well again quite, quite interesting of the nine runners who won ran in last year's king george do you know how many are running this year Froden. that's it mm, yeah. so that's amazing yeah. so yeah, it's completely different field apart from Froden. you know you yeah. had a steering for, for, for launch clander's over manila uh, Indo, Chantry House, it's, I think just... It's a, com it's it's a completely a... different season, isn't it, Sam? Like I said, it does yeah. feel like everything is like, OK, wipe the slate clean, yeah. new generation come through. Well, I think you Which can see that great. last year as well. They didn't necessarily know who was going to be the next big thing because Chantry House went off favourite for that race. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. Times, the film is a time show that he wasn't up to that level. He's running in the role in America, actually. That's yeah. right, that's right, yeah. And Tornado Flyer was last seen being beaten by Blue Lord, of course, who is another yeah. one of those next-generation horses coming through. So, uh, yeah, the baton will be handed over. Who will it be handed over to, in your opinion, Simon? Right, so I, I think the guys... I think Long Presse is a really good horse. He'll be suited by the track. I think Brave Man's Game, I'm against, and similarly a hoist in your similar sort of form, actually. They were first and second favourite in last year's Kauto Star. Um, you know, there's a, and they keep running against each other, but are they, you know, as good as Long Presse? I don't think so. The, the, I think the horse I'd be tempted to... Maybe have an each way bet on his NYLM because he 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 was he was coming through the ranks. He won the the Cheltenham Bumper. He won the uh, the Ballymore. Uh, he acts on soft ground. He looks like a horse who's going to stay. They went back over two miles last year in the attempt to re uh, sort of almost refresh him, and he ran well behind Energy Mean. But this is his sort of trip. This is the sort of horse he was uh, you know meant to turn into. Uh, and I thought he was impressive last time against some solid opposition in Kenboy, Conflate, and Galvin. So NYLM to me each way is a solid bet, but I think Long Presse will be very hard to beat. OK, and Simon, price boost, please. Oh, yes, and my two price boosts, boosts Paul Nichols to win the race, 6-5. to five. He's obviously loaded with Brave Man's Game, Hitman and uh, Frodon, 6-5 to five from 10-11. to 11. And Long Press to win by over three lengths is 7-2 to two from 5-2. to two. And just for interest sake, five of the last 10 King Georges have been won by over uh, three lengths. So okay. if you fancy Long Press, 7-2 eh? is worth a little fluff. Simon. Simon, give us a wee insight here. Was that price made up before we realised the ground was going to be really soft? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, it, was, yeah. it may well have been. So take the 72 before the special gets to lose. <laughs> Albeit, well, like... If you, well, Kiel said it was... Think an even money chance, you know? Yeah, true. Although he said it, it was yeah. going to be as soft as 2017 where might might win it by a length. So... Um, I know, <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's not that simple. It's never that simple. Otherwise, we'd be nah. we're just making money off the distances. Um, Certainly never that simple to might bite. Wasn't it double shuffle, he it was, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. But that's my best ever anti-post. Thirty-threes, uh, I, I got it. Why am I telling you that? There's, like, there's no need for that. <laughs> Chronic after time. It was horrible. Terrible. Horrible. Terrible. But he will, you know, always a place in my heart uh, and all that. Um, and I'll be back in a hoist in your El Dorado, Ellen. Mainly place, uh, but a little bit on the win, just in case. Because if this does become brutal, I think some of the uh, potentially classier, more fragile types at single figures might well. Uh, bottle out of this, uh, but uh, Kiels, what are you you're going with? Yeah, I want Hitman to win. Uh, yeah, your I pocket think, wants it. I think the Long Press will win. Okay, he could be different class. Keith, yeah, Long Press for me. Yeah, he's uh, he's one of the best of the day. I think at the current prices. Okay, and uh, Simon, yeah, Long Press uh, and Ed Boyle then each way. Lovely stuff, uh, and uh, quite a few others. Hoist in your won't suit Kempton, says Tom Leach, uh, although Jim Stanton thinks the flat track will suit him. Uh, and uh, Eldorado LM will uh, finish in front of Brave Man's Game, says Off World, there's a match bet for you. Uh, and Sam Caney said Frodo's won the worst King George ever. 
Uh, and what with Wyatt said, he, be, he also did a stellar job protecting the ring on a four-mile race to Mordor. So, um, mm. yeah, uh, <laughs> lovely little exchange in the chat there. That's, uh, that's the King George. Hopefully uh, it's as epic as uh, uh, Lord of the Rings was. But uh, two more races at Kempton to go. The 3.05 we'll be looking at next. Uh, an interesting novices handicap chase where Solo, Don Alvaro and Balco Coastal are 9-2. to two. Co favourites. West Cork is 11-2. Panic Attack is 11-2. Uh, and it's 9-1 to one bar those. Uh, I'll come to you first uh, for, for this one. Keith, uh, I've not got a strong opinion on too many races. Um, this, uh, this, this weekend necessarily at Kempton uh, although the ground is going to slightly worry me a bit because I thought two and a half miles on a flat track uh, was Balco Coastal's absolute dream scenario um, his two wins over hurdles were on fairly sharp flat tracks he won his bumper here uh, and he seemed to get outpaced last time out in a race which Nicky Henderson likes to run a horse in and then run him in this like he did with Mr Coffee last year uh, and he did with Full Shift a few years ago but slightly concerned with the two and a half miles on very soft ground would suit him, but I thought Balco Coastal was very interesting. It also took Mr. Coffee until March to realise he actually liked jumping fences, and even then he didn't particularly enjoy himself in the Kim Muir. I thought Balco Coastal looked very much like that on his chasing debut, to be honest. One of these Henderson horses. When Nicky Henderson horses don't do that well on their chasing debut and don't look that hearty, I tend to take the view that I'm going to keep watching you and keep opposing you until you show me you can actually take the chasing um, so I, for that reason I was actually quite strongly against him to be honest uh, although it's not as strong a renewal as it can be this one I don't think particularly this can often be a really really good race I'm, I'm glad it is still on the telly uh, or is it on the telly it was meant to be earlier in the week but it had to get bumped off for the long walk and maybe it was back it's not on, on the but, telly it's not on the telly Keith uh, doesn't, that, is a, that is a shame better race than the long walk yes uh, <laughs> <laughs> fair absolutely fair we certainly but, get, it might get a nice um graded performer in the future out of it what did you uh, what, what are you going with uh, a horse that i normally wouldn't sort of go with either because essentially she's bred for the flat but i thought panic attack would absolutely transform for fences when she won at huntington on her debut um the horse that she beat is sort of a 125 level horse win house um, just tanked all over her won very very easily looked a lot better for for the switch to fences uh, and obviously huntington but like kempton it's a, it's a right-handed track puts a bit of emphasis on speeds and a lot of these horses, I think, yeah, it might end up looking a strong race, but I think it'll end up looking a strong race in April or something when Balco Coastal's had a bit more match practice, once West Cork's got a few more runs behind them over fences. So, yeah, in a race where not too many were looking like they were necessarily going to have taken to it like the proverbial dumps to water, she has. Uh, I thought she was quite interesting. OK, um, there we go. Uh, panic attack. Keels, hopefully you yeah, I came down to this, and there was more that I didn't like than did, and, and yeah. that was the problem. I thought Bal that's usually not a bad angle. You know, sometimes, yeah, it? it's, it's right. I thought Balco Coastal just won't like the ground. I mean, they've always said that for for ages that he doesn't want, want deep ground. Uh, I think Dom Alvaro definitely won't like the ground. Uh, I, I've never really trusted Solo. Um, you know, sometimes I like him, sometimes I don't. Panic Attack, my issue with her is she's only ever wins against mares. I did like her. I tried really, really hard to fancy her. And then I came to the conclusion that West Court could outclass them, but then I'd be worried about him on really, really soft ground as well. Uh, and just not convinced about him as a chaser. So I thought, right, I'm going to take a chance. And I'm going to back a horse who's top weight, but never run over fences. And that's Gal Galore Dessassons of Nigel Hawks. I think he might have a pretty decent horse on his hands here. This is, he's been improving uh, rapidly over hurdles. Um, uh, the pulled up first time out this year wasn't his fault because he said something fell in front of him and the rider lost his irons and he pulled him out. He won by 12 lengths last time out, beat, beat, beating Phoenix River at Donkers. I just bruised all over him, basically. And other than that, his only defeat was when third, uh, and in fact, his last four was when third when in, in the Dovecote. Mm. Uh, here at 40 to 1 to, to Alcan Risk. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just, I just like the way he went through that Donker race. I think he's a good horse. He's got to prove that he jumps. And obviously he goes in there off top weight against some horses that have been well regarded. But I just have a feeling that this is quite a classy animal in the making. OK. And you had a couple of impressive winners. Um, yeah, they, they, they're going well. He, you know, he doesn't, have a, he doesn't have a brilliant record. I did have a look with chasers making their debuts in handicaps. But even so, there's just, just something about him that really interests me. OK. I also thought gut film on anything else. Okay, um, it's an open race. I thought sort of Arizona Cardinal back to two and a half on soft ground as well could be interesting. So it's an open, open contest, Simon. What have you got for us? Uh, penultimate race on Boxing Day. Yeah, I thought I'd just pass on Tom Scudamore. Obviously, Coral Ambassador has two rides on the day. Royal Pagai has picked up a good spare in the King George, but Panic Attack 
is his big fancy. And he was very bullish in the blog, uh, saying she was very good at hunting when winning her chase debut. Everything she did prior to a chase debut suggests she'll be a better chase than a hurdler. Uh, I think there's plenty more to come from her. The trip round here will be absolutely fine. I'm certain she'll get three miles in time. I'm really looking forward to riding and seeing how she progresses. I think the point is that she's going to stay, act on the ground. She's going to be a better chase than a hurdler. I thought she was quite impressive last time out. So I'm firmly in the panic attack camp. Okay, uh, there you go. Panic attack is an 11 to 2 shot for that penultimate race of the day at Kempton. Uh, the last one is a uh, handicap hurdle. Uh, and uh, again, another uh, good race. 15 of them lining up over two miles and five furlongs. A grey dawning is 5 to 2 for the, uh, the Dan Skelton team. 4 to 1 Theatre Glory. Ivaldi is 6 to 1. Paddy's motorbike is 8 to 1. The bomber list and 10s. Royam Uni 10s. Optimised Prime 11s. Bull Bali 12 to 1. And bigger the rest. Absolutely wide open stuff. Four places. Uh, from Coral, although um, five or six would be nice in uh, in a contest like <laughs> this. Unsurprisingly, uh, an unexposed uh, skeleton handicap debut uh, debutant is attracting some support, quite a lot of support to be fair for Grey Dawning. But God, there's loads in here with uh, with progression keels. Yeah, I think the I, I, I think the talking horses are taking far too much out of the market, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, that, that was the way I looked at it. Uh, I ended up coming down in a couple. Uh, and they are JB Wire runs around here a lot, uh, runs well, uh, always looks like they want a stiffer test at two mile five. But he's been running on good ground, and he's a two time soft ground uh, soft ground winner over hurdles. And I just thought that he might go really well with Alexander Thorne taking five pound off. I don't think he's not too badly handicapped. I think What's Up With You is potentially very well handicapped. He was actually fourth a few years ago to Gallop in the Champ in the, in, in the Martin Pipe. He's, about, he's over a stone lower now, always needs that first run of the season. Uh, won't mind the ground at all. I know nothing about Bo Morgan uh, at all as a jockey, but uh, I'm going to take a chance on those two at big prices. OK, a couple of big price options then. In, in fact, the... I've just had a look. He's had seven winners from 20, just 24 eyes. That's 29%. Stop, stop. I, I could do this one. Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Tell us about <laughs> Bo Morgan. <laughs> Bo Morgan, and, keeper. And so, so, yeah, it was... I mean, I, had, I didn't really know him before I was looking at this race. And what's up with you is the horse that I've picked out for. It's my biggest swing on the day, really. He's, he's quite a big price. And Bo Morgan, I thought, always putting a seven-pound claimer up, the sort of thing we would do here. But he's only had five rides since the start of November and the form figures of those horses have been one zero two one three, So he's evidently a somebody that they're putting on relatively fancy. There's certainly horses that are proven successful. So that's not an issue there with him at all. What's up with you? As Keel says, he's been fourth in the Martin Pipe. He's dropped about sixteen pounds in the weights over the last season. The whole Ben Pauling yard was a bit MIA last season, which is why he's dropped down so much and he's only had one run since the yard's been been back in form, uh, which he probably would have needed. So I just think he's, in, at that sort of price, he's, he's well worth a big a big look. And they're obviously trying to keep this Bo Morgan's um, seven-pound clean for as long as they can. I don't know if he's related to Luca Morgan, who rides for the yard. It's not that relevant for betting purposes, so I've not mm -hmm. done the research, but he might well be. But either way, he's, he's clearly attached to this yard and, and fairly well regarded, and he's on a horse that's already well handicapped. Okay, what's up with you then? It's a, a 16 to 1 shot uh, at, uh, at Kempton. He's, uh, ben Paul has also got Optimised Prime, or I thought I had a bit of a cracking chance as well. Obviously, you've got the Lingfield soft ground option uh, angle to, uh, to consider, as uh, most of the horses in that hated every second of it. But if it rains as much as we're anticipating, it might be similar at Kempton. Last race is a good one then, Simon. Wrap it up for us. Yeah, cracking. Good good uh, insight from the guys there. Grey Dawning's been really well back to short as 2 to 1 now. Seems to be shortened all the time. It's real confidence on the skeleton camp. Bits of money for uh, what's up with you. I thought the bomber Liston is interesting. You know, if only he's very unexposed. They took him over to punch down for a handicap. I heard he ran quite well uh, last year. Um, so, you know, first time out uh, for Nicky Henderson. He's sort of been nibbled at in the market. But, uh, yeah, that what's up with you. I just have a quick look. Still looks very well handicapped on old form with a good claimer on board. Yeah, I might have a few quid on each way myself. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've convinced you. I'd also show in, uh, throw in um, Ball Bally as well uh, for the Tizard team. Ran really well last time out at Cheltenham and um, did win on soft ground at Sandown back in March again, which will certainly be pretty testing. So I thought Ball, Ball Bally was a little bit interesting at 12s. Two very unexposed types ahead of him at Cheltenham last time out. So, OK, uh, that brings the, the Kempton card to an end then for that 340. Shout out to uh, any tips at home. Racing team in the bomber list and each way. Uh, and uh, uh, not too much else in this uh, this last one, although Martin Lewis is in the chat, so uh, the money saving expert, although he's not enjoying Tom Leach winding him up about that. But uh, uh, mm. let's uh, speaking of money saving experts, let's see if we can 
uh, ask the money-making experts uh, for some naps. But I'm just going to clarify something because I've got just had mixed messages on this. Do we want a nap in the races we've talked about or a nap not in the races we've talked about? <laughs> Well, we could do both. I mean, we could have naps. We could have yeah. naps from the race we talked about. And then maybe if anyone's got a, a horse. To, and a best you know, of the rest elsewhere. Else, yeah, best of the rest. Yeah, let's do that. OK, cool. Yeah. Right. Let's start off with the uh, the Boxing Day Kempton nap then. Paul Keeley. Uh, Gallia de Lito in the quarto start novice chase. I, I know she was 10 to 1 earlier on, but if it absolutely chucks it down, I wouldn't be surprised if she ended up five. OK. Uh, Keith, Kempton nap. Uh, Lord Press for the King George. I'll press it is. And Simon? And a panic attack for Tom Scudamore in the penultimate uh, handicap. OK, there you go. Uh, and, um, yeah, we have... A oh, 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 hoist in your... Uh, or you don't fancy or, anything at Kempton, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but I have got plenty uh, of, uh, of notebook horses on the other meetings, so this next week's going to be more exciting. But oh. hoist in your... And... We'll leave it over to you, then, shall we? <laughs> no, I'll do yeah. potentially. Uh, other horses elsewhere. Uh, Keith Melrose, anything on Boxing Day that's on your, on your tracker? Yeah, um, obviously you'll know I'll be back in, in overdrive for the Roland Merrick, but the other one that I had picked out that's going to be in King tomorrow's racing post is uh, at Wincanton. Robert Walford aimed two horses at that car last year. They both got mugged. One of them was Edith Elton, who got done by Favre de Civila uh, in a three-mile race. He was in the three-mile race in a two-and-a-half-mile race this week. He was declared for the two-and-a-half-mile race. There's already been a bit of money for him. He shaped really with Exeter last time, so Edith Elton in the 203 at Wincanton. Okay. There you go. Uh, Simon, anything elsewhere on the tracker? Yeah, a friend of mine, Andy Irvine, trains a few running on Boxing Day, but Mr. Jack in the 327 at Fontwell um, is a horse rounded back into form. Um, Travelled well last time out. Just was they, they left his challenge too late. He likes to really be sort of rousted from home a good two, three furlongs out. So he's got the condition on board uh, at Fontwell. Bradley Roberts, who's uh, ridden three winners from 13, so knows how to win, uh, taking five pounds off. Because he's top weight in 0 to 100. I think Mr. Jack will go very close, 7 to 1. Okay. Keels? Yeah, Roland Merrick, we haven't talked about. Roland it's Merrick. A uh, mm. Top weight, Fanyan Destervel. Uh, I think he's got a massive chance. Uh, uh, it could be the first off a lot of people's list because he ran a right moody race in the uh, stepped up the trip for the first time in the Cold Gold Cup at Newbury, tailing himself off, but then absolutely charged up the running mm. uh, to finish seventh of, of, of the 19. And if you look back to last year, first time out last year, he did exactly the same in the old round chase. He just didn't look remotely interested. He might be one of those horses that needs a run to re work out what he's supposed to be doing again. Yeah. Because next time out, he travelled like a dream and absolutely hacked up at Newbury. He's got some cracking form to him in his name. That third to Fakir Duderi in the Ascot chase uh, last year when running on really strongly. Uh, I think he can win a handicap off 159 over over three miles, and I think this might be it. OK, well, there you go. Um, all that I thought was interesting was Chapel Green in the last at Weatherby for Lucinda Russell. Won, uh, a uh, novice hurdle at Kelso last time out, and uh, I did a good figure behind a nice type of air on its penultimate start as well. And I thought um, a five-year-old was uh, quite well handicapped on the speed figures that one's been showing in novice events. So plenty to go to war with then on Boxing Day and, of course, on the 27th and throughout the whole Christmas period all the way up to... Uh, Cheltenham's New, New uh, Year's Day meeting, of course. Um, it's going to be a cracking Christmas period. We hope you have a wonderful one. Uh, and uh, Merry Christmas to you, Simon. Yeah, have a good time, guys. It's been fun working with you this year. Look forward to the new year. Absolutely. Roll on 2023. Uh, Merry Christmas, Keith. Merry Christmas, Luke. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Colourblind Keith Melrose there. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas, Keith. I was as cheerful as Keith gets. You know that, don't you? <laughs> that is. That is, absolutely. But yes, Merry Christmas to you and to all our viewers. Oh, yeah, pint of egg noggle sorting right out. Merry Christmas, <laughs> Happy New Year, and uh, enjoy the remainder of 2022. We'll see you next season. <laughs>